We're ready to go. Okay. Hello everybody and welcome back. Today we're going to work on a pressure cleaner. The pressure cleaner runs really good if it's on full choke, but if you take the choke off, she dies. So that tells me that it's either got a really clogged air filter or a clogged jet. And I'm kind of betting on a clogged jet in this case because if you're running on full choke, what you're doing is you're sucking as much gas as possible into the engine. And if your jets are all nice and clean, you won't have to do that. So let's get to it and see what we've got. Okay, let's go ahead and try to start her. We're gonna turn the fuel on, hit the choke, and the accelerator this way is full rabbit. This is wide open. This is accelerating at idle. So we'll give it a moment for the fuel to fill up the bowl. And choke's on full. And let's give her a try. Actually starts up pretty good. The problem we've got is If you turn the choke off, she dies. Now that can be caused by a clogged air filter. If your air filter is super dirty, it'll do that. So the easy test is take the air filter off and try it again. We'll go ahead and set her back on choke, full rabbit, and gas is on. And now we'll try to turn the choke off. And she still dies. And if we look at the air filter, Foam looks okay. Air filter looks really good. So we know the air filter is not a problem. So we move to the next step. And the next step in this case is the jets on the carburetor. Now there are a couple of kinds of jets that are on carburetors. Let's have a look at this one. We ran the motor till she stalled. That way the bowl should be pretty much out of gas. So let's go ahead and pull the bowl off and see what we've got. First thing we'll do is hit this and drain the extra gas out of it. There shouldn't be much of anything left because she did stall. Okay, not much there. We'll go ahead and put this back. And let's pull the bowl off real quick and see what it's got. Now, if the jets are in the screw, then we can just clean the screw up. You can see in this case, with the Honda GX200, this bolt, it does nothing more than hold, hold the bowl on the carburetor. So we'll go ahead and pull the bowl off. And looking inside here, it doesn't look all that great, but it does sit around a lot. So we'll put that in the cleaner. Okay, as always, when we work on one of these motors, I'm going to get a magnet to put all my assorted little metal parts on. Those are the little bits you tend to lose. Pull the air cleaner off. One of these days, I think I'm going to have to get myself an impact wrench. But this little guy's worked so well so long for me, it's hard to make a change. Okay, let's see what we've got holding us on. Oh, don't want to do that. And there you have it. Now we've got our airbox out of the way. Okay, the first thing I'll do is prepare to unhook the fuel line. And we've got a good bit of gas in this one. So we're going to go ahead and pinch it before we take it off. Because draining the tank on this is not nearly as easy as draining it on some others. Okay, when you pinch it, pinch it, remember, see how, see how tight I've got this? You don't want to pinch these little lines too, 
too terribly much. You can do damage to the line. Oh, that's not quite enough. Pretty close. Okay, that should probably do it right there. So we'll leave that pinched. And go ahead and pull the fuel line off with a pair of pliers. There we go. Now the only thing between us and everything is the linkage. When you pull it out, you find that the linkage is hung up on this. But if you get it at just the right angle, she pops right out. And you're going to want to make a note of that for when you're putting it back together. There you go. Let's ease the carburetor out of the frame. Now let's take her over to the bench and clean her up. Okay, let's get started. We'll go ahead and pull the bowl off. And we'll take the larger pieces out. Now if we had opened this up and we'd found the little holes in this bolt right here, that would have meant that this was the jets. In this case, that's not it. The jets are hiding in there. So now let's pull the jets out. Sometimes these come out easy peasy and sometimes you have to convince them to come loose. See, easy peasy. So this is what we're going to work on cleaning up. If we look at it now, and I hold my hand here so we can get a good focus on it. I don't see any hole in there at all. Now, if you're doing this at home and you don't have any elaborate tools, you can run a piece of wire through this to clean it up, and that'll usually work really good. We're pretty lucky to have some tools to work with, so we're going to go ahead and run the entire carburetor through the bath. Okay, let's go ahead and take the needle and seat out. And it's got a plastic needle in it, which is not a big deal. You can love them or hate them. And we'll leave this right here. Now the bowl looks kind of bad inside. It looks a little rough. The rest of the carburetor doesn't look terrible inside. So let's put her in the ultrasonic bath and get her cleaned up. Okay, this has been heating up for a little while. And all we're going to do is quite literally drop her in. We'll go ahead and drop our two screws in. Might as well make them shiny. We'll drop our jets in. And let her cook for a little while. And we'll come back to check on it in eight minutes. Okay, they've been cooking for a few minutes, so let's see what we've got. Now, it looks like a pretty good improvement here. And the ball still looks a little bit rough. We might have to sand her down a little bit. Let's find the jets. There's one part. And yeah, if you're wondering, it's really warm in there. Now let's take it over and put her back together. Now if we look inside the jet, we can see we had nothing at all before, but now we've got a nice clean looking hole. So we're good there. And let's see how you look inside. That's a little bit more difficult to line this up so that you can see all the way through. But if I blow on it, I can feel a steady stream of air coming through it. So we know she's in good shape. Now you'll note on this, it's not easy to see, but there's a whole bunch of tiny little holes on the side. Where are they? 
there they are. Okay, on this you can see there's a whole bunch of tiny little holes on the side. And in order to test it, what you do is you blow into one end, blow into this end, and see if air is coming through all the little holes. And that focusing is tough on this little guy. When you tighten it in, don't make it really, really tight. It's probably easier to go in from this side where we don't have everything in our way. There we go. Note we've got a little rubber gasket here. We want to make sure she's relatively clean. Okay, now before we tighten this up, we're going to look at which direction is which. Okay, that direction faces the motor. So we'll make sure that our little screw is at a point where we can get to it easily if we ever have to open it in the future and drain the gas out of it. Remember these have gaskets, so don't go crazy tighten them. tightening them. And there we go, we look pretty good. Gasket looks a little pinched. Let's get everything on the field of play. Okay, very nice, that should do it. Now let's take her back over and put her all together and see what we've got. Okay, now if you were paying attention and took pictures before you took everything apart, this part's really easy. See, so remember that we put our spring on first We're working around our pliers, which doesn't make it any easier. Grab it a little bit low to give ourselves a little bit of flex room. And there she goes. And now the other piece of linkage, all we do is line it up and drop it in. That goes in a whole lot easier. And there it is. Next is our little fuel line. Which we'll pinch with our fingers. And we'll put that on with a minimal amount of gas loss. Oh. Pull this back down in two steps. There's one. And there's the other one. Come on, buddy. Don't be a pain in my ass. There you go. That's beautiful. Okay, now everything appears to be pretty ducky. Okay, we've got our little steel plate on. Let's put our little choke mechanism back in place. It goes right here. Very, very, very nice. Let's put a cover back on. And remember when you're doing this part, don't force anything. If you're forcing it, that usually means something's hanging up. You might have a lever stuck or something. And this stuff's pretty easy to break. So we get all our screws just started. Not hard to do on here. And before we tighten it down, we'll take a good look at everything. Make sure we're happy with everything. And we are. So let's tighten her back up. 
Now I'm doing these two before I do the top one because these bolts control the seal on the carburetor to the motor. So we want to make sure they're correct. And tightening this first might cause a misalignment that we don't expect. Okay, let's put our air filter back together. And one of the nice things about using a magnet for this to contain all your screws is when you reach the end and you've only got one screw left, you know you're finished. And you know you didn't miss anything. Because every one of us has gotten to the end of a motor and had one, one screw left. Or you might lose a screw. You might have a screw fall on the ground and you won't, you won't even know you had a problem until you, get, until you get to the end and it doesn't start. Or even if it does start, if you push it away and then see that one screw laying there. So let's put some water to it and start her up and see what we've got. Let's make sure the power switch is on, and it is. Full choke, gas is on, full rabbit. Okay, now we'll note that our choke is now completely off and she's running smooth. Now the trial by fire. Will she idle low? And the gas is all the way down and she sounds good. Now we're going to go ahead and turn the fuel off and we'll let her idle until she dies. Okay, that went really well. Now you can see that it runs pretty well with the choke completely off. And after it warmed up a little bit, it stopped cycling, or as we call it, hunting. And it idles nice and smooth, even with the choke off. And it was all for a clogged jet. Now this type of carburetor, we had to go ahead and take the carburetor off and pull the jets out and clean up the jets and put it back together. Now you can clean it with a piece of wire if you don't have an ultrasonic cleaner. Just run a wire through the center hole of the jets and make sure that you can blow air through it nicely. And if you've got that, it'll probably work fine. If you have the other type of jet, like this one, okay, this is the other most common kind of jet. This one is the bolt that holds the bowl onto the carburetor. And you can see the little hole at the base. There's one on each side. And you wanna make sure that they're clear and that you can blow air through the top and then it comes out these holes easily. And if you've got this type of bolt, when you pull the bolt off the bottom of the carburetor, then go ahead and clean the bolt off and bolt it back on and you might get lucky and not have to clean the rest of the carburetor. And today's, we did have to clean the rest of the carburetor. But she came out really good and she runs like a champ and end results are what it's all about. I do appreciate you watching and don't forget to subscribe and we'll see you next time.